Hello guys, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Emmanuel Jijon. In this video, I'll talk about what file permissions are and how to change or read file permissions in Linux. This is an extremely important video. Why? Because knowing how to manage file permissions in Linux can help you restrict access to specific files that can cause damages on your system in case it falls in the hands of the wrong person. For example, with file permissions, you can stop people from deleting specific files on your server and you can also prevent people from executing specific files as programs on your server so without taking much of your time let's get started the first thing i want you to know is that whenever you create a file in linux so we're gonna assume that you know this is a file so whenever you create a, a file in linux this file comes with permissions so the first permission is the ability to you know read this file so who can read this file, who can see, you know, the content of this file. Another permission that's attached to this file is the write permission. That is, who has the permissions to edit this file and add content to this file. And the final permission that comes with this file is the execute permission. That is, who has the powers to execute this file on our system as if this file was a program. So whenever you create a file in Linux, you have, you know, the read permission, you have, you know, the write permission, and you have, you know, the execute permission. Read means who can read the content of this file. Write means who can edit this file and add content to it and execute means who can run this file on our server as a program. You also have to know the different types or category of people who can access this file, right? So the first category of people who can access this file is the owner. So the owner can be the person who created the file or someone assigned the permission to own the file. For example, I can create a file and I'll be the owner of that file. A system administrator or DevOps engineer, whosoever, they can assign that file to John, right? And John will become the new owner of that file. So the owner here would have, you know, the permission to read this file, to write on this file, or to execute this file as, you know, as a program. The second category of people who have access to this file are groups. So a group is simply a collection of people that share the same permission right so groups can also have you know access to these files and a group would have you know the ability to read the ability to write and the ability to execute this file as well and the final group of people are others right that's any other user on your linux operating system right let me give you a, a summary of what i just you know talked about in linux when you create a file that file comes with permissions the three permissions that's attached to that file you have the read permission you have the write permission you have the execute permission and there are three categories of people that can access that file you have the owner the person who created the file or someone that was assigned to be the owner of that file then you have groups that's people who share the same permissions can also have access to that file then you also have others that's any other user on your system right so now let's go into our server and let's run a command to see if we can find you know the permissions that are attached to our files. So back here, I will run the command lx-l. We already know that when you run the command lx-l, it's going to list all the content that's inside of a specific directory. But what I want you to pay close attention to is this thing right here, right? What is this? And you know, what is this right here? What is Ubuntu Ubuntu? What does that mean? Don't worry, I'm gonna talk about this. So let's start with this portion right here. So this path contains the file permission. Let's understand what we're looking at right here. Right? If you're new to Linux, this will sound kind of complicated and tricky, but let me break it down for you. Right here, we have a directory called app right and there are permissions attached to that directory you have permissions that look like this drw xrw xr dash x what does that mean now you can break these permissions into four categories the first category here is this d right here then you have the rwx right then you have the rwx and you have the r dash x let's understand what this means this D here means directory. That's the meaning of D. So whenever you see a D, know that it's a directory. Up here is a directory, as you can see, it has a D. 
infrastructures also a directory as you can see you know it also has a d so this d stands for directory now this r right here stands for read and w stands for write and this x stands for execute remember i said there are three permissions that are attached to a file in linux the read permission the write permission and the execute permission so let me explain something to you so as you can see we already know that this right here is a directory this first category as you can see there's one there's two and um, you know there's three right here this first one is the owner so this represents the permission that the owner of this directory has as you can see the owner of this directory has the permission to read has the permission to write and has the permission to execute you know this directory right here now because it's a directory it doesn't mean executing it means running it as a program it simply means the owner has the permissions to go inside of that directory so if the owner does a cd into app then he will go inside of that directory that's what execute means when you know we're dealing with directories now this second category right here you know is the group the group also has the permission to write the permission to read and the permission to execute as well it means if you add anyone inside of this group they would have the permission to write read and execute on this directory and this third one right here simply represents the permissions of others right as any other user on our system as you can see the only have the permission to read and execute they can't do anything else so they already have the permission to see what's inside of the directory and to go inside of the directory but they cannot delete the directory they can change the name of the directory no they can create something inside of that directory the auto read and you know execute right now this little sign right here that's a slash it simply means no permission so if you see that know that it means no permission right so they don't have any other permission apart from these two permissions right so this is kind of what this year means now let's look at this one right here the one of a file this you know my underscore file dot text so we can also break this down into three categories like this right here you have the first category you have the second category and you have the third category now when it has to do with a file this here is indicating that this is a file. That's the first thing I want you to know. So whenever you see this, dash here, know that you know it's a file. For example, this is a file right here. So you can see there's that dash. This is another file right here. So you can see there is that dash. So when you see it, know that that's a file. Now, in the first category, this is the permission of the owner, right? Uh, that's the person who created the file or the person that was assigned to be the owner of that file. So the second one right here, are the permissions of you know the group this third one right here are the permissions of others right that's any other user on our linux operating system right now let's look at the owner so the owner here only has you know arrow will stand for you know read then w stand for right x will stand for you know execute and dash is equals to no permission now when we look at the owner we're going to notice that the owner has the permission to read right and the owner also has the permission to write so these are the two permissions that are assigned to this owner and apart from that they don't have any other permission like for example they don't have the permission to execute this file as a program now the group also has the permission you know to read and they also have the permission to write but they don't have the permission to execute this file as a program others with an s represents any other user that's on our linux operating system and the only permission they have is the permission to read in linux you can also see the owner and the group directly from this command right here so as you can see right here we have ubuntu and we also have ubuntu right so right here is the owner's name right so this are uh, part or this category represents the owner's name so the owner of this file is ubuntu right and ubuntu has the permissions to read and write but they cannot execute right for the directory the owner also is ubuntu and ubuntu has the permission to read 
right and execute on that directory so this first category right here represents the owner's name and in our next video we're going to see how to change the owner of a file and how to change permissions of a file now this right here represents the group name right as you can see the group name is still ubuntu why remember in my previous video i said when you create a user a group is created for that user so when the user ubuntu was created a group called Ubuntu was created as well. So when Ubuntu created this directory called app, the directory was automatically assigned to the group Ubuntu. So if I add someone inside of that group Ubuntu, that person would also have the permissions to do whatever thing Ubuntu can, can do on this directory or on these files, right? So this represents the owner's name and this represents, you know, the group name. That's also something I wanted you to know. So when it comes to modifying file permissions and file ownership, the two commands you have to know. The first command is the change owner, like this. This stands for change owner, right? And what this command will help you do is that it will help you change the owner of a file. For example, right now, the owner of this file and directory as Ubuntu. I can change that owner to Emmanuel. I can change that owner to John. I can change that owner to Peter. And if I want to do it, I need the change owner command, right? The second command you have to learn is the change mode command, right? Change mode, right? And basically, this is the command you're going to need to change, you know, permissions. For example, if I want to make in such a way that ubuntu can execute this file as a program i can do it i can use this change mode command and i can assign permissions you know to ubuntu to execute that file as a program and i can also use the change mode command and i can use it to remove permissions from ubuntu for example i don't want ubuntu to have the you know right permission on this file so i don't want ubuntu to be able to you know edit this file right here so i can use the change mode command and i can take away the permission to you know read that file from ubuntu so in our next video we're going to see how to change the users of a file change the permissions of a file and also we're going to see how to use numerical values to assign permissions for example if i do a change mode 777 file name what does that mean if i do a change mode 666 finding what does that mean so in our next video we're going to see how to do that so thank you guys for watching this video please do not forget to like share and subscribe and see you in my next video bye